the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Are there any changes to the agenda? Okay. Anyone want to make a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Who would like to second? I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. No public comment, it looks like. Um, announcements? There are no announcements. And then approval of the July 30th, 2024 meeting minutes. I didn't notice anything. I thought they were pretty good. I don't know if anybody else saw anything. I didn't see anything. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. All right. I'll I'll, second it. All right. Brad seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, public hearings. Um, zoning ordinance amendment title 11-5-5, fences application requirements. Um, so the changes to the ordinance were essentially just to remove the option for a site plan. Um, so now we are requiring an actual certificate of survey. That's the only change. Okay. So I'll open the public hearing at 7.08 p.m. Yeah, you close it. All right. Um, <laughs> no one's in attendance, so I'll close the public hearing at 7.09 p.m. All right, anyone have questions on the change? No, I think that's probably a good idea because yeah. people worry about where they think their property line is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in practice, we've been requiring a survey, but we kind of caught that in the language. It, it allowed for a survey or a site plan, so... Um, if somebody would have pressed us on it, we... They just got to find their stakes too, right? Or is it the actual... We require that they be able to identify their property pins before they place a fence. Yeah, the stakes, yeah. Okay. Yep. And we do an inspection before we allow the fence to go in. Okay. What if a pin is missing? Then you have to hire a surveyor to place the pin. Okay. Okay. So you just need an approval from us? A uh, recommendation to okay. the city council. Okay. I'll make a recommendation for the change in the, uh, the zoning ordinance amendment for fences. Okay. So moved. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. General business. A draft zoning ordinance amendment detached accessory structures. Yep. See that. Um, so we've been discussing this since February of this year. Uh, discussions so far provided us with several recommendations to include in any potential ordinance amendment. So we compiled all those recommendations from over the months for final review before the commission before our public hearing was scheduled. We spent this much time on it, so I just kind of wanted to have one more meeting, get everything in order, and make sure we're good to go before we take this uh, to public hearing. So the recommendations are as follows. Uh, there's seven of them. So we'll, we're going to amend the definition for height to just the vertical distance to be measured from the grade of the finished building to the highest point of the roof. Uh, for properties one acre and under, 1,000 square foot maximum floor area allowed. Remove it all language related to conditional use permits. The same for uh, properties greater than one acre, except it's 2,000 square foot maximum floor area allowed. Uh, no more than two detached accessory buildings per lot in residential zones, except by conditional use permit. Maximum building height for detached accessory structures increased to 20 feet, must not exceed the height of the principal structure. No access or driveway requirements shall be enacted for any of the accessory use structures. Uh, detached accessory dwelling units or ADU shall be considered the same as detached accessory buildings for size standards. Uh, so if changes are recommend, recommended tonight, staff will draft a final ordinance amendment for discussion at an upcoming meeting for public hearing. Uh, this is it's already drafted actually. So unless there's changes, I think we're all set to go next month. Was there something about siding or shingles or? I mean, that it matches or? Yep, that's everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it would have. <coughs> so, yeah, it's two pages, and then we're actually.
actually um, clearing out some of the ordinances and removing a lot of the extra language. So that's kind of our goal always is to try to simplify the ordinance. And I think this accomplishes that. I thought it looked good. Yeah. Does it wrong with others? Okay. So we just needed recommendations. Um, you can just, I don't even think we need that. Just no. we got the feedback and direction, no changes. I do have one question. So we're talking about matching the, the housing structures and whatnot. So is that going to eliminate a lot of the like metal buildings? That's already not eliminated. Okay, so perfect. Okay. 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 We'll schedule a public hearing for next month's meeting. Um, go from there. Perfect. Thank you. All right, um, B, draft zoning ordinance amendment residential district landscaping requirements. Uh, this item came up in the July meeting. Towards the end of the meeting, several commissioners discussed a uh, desire to expand the list of trees that currently count towards the two required trees for lots of new subdivisions and existing residential lots. So staff reached out to Wolfen and Mink to see if he had any recommendations for additional species that would do well in the city. Here's the list he provided us. So we have pictures here um, to go with all the examples. Ohio Buckeye um, is another sort of, it's a good medium-sized tree, no real cons there. Uh, Northern Cat Kelpa, if I'm saying that right, um, it's another pretty tree. Uh, it's good for lawn or streets have seed pods, so that's something to consider. Frontier elm is a species of elm that's Dutch elm disease resistant, um, that, as well as the Patriot elm. Bitternut hook hickory it also has some large fruit seeds. It's a native tree to southern Minnesota and it's considered underplanted generally. Little leaf linden. not an ash tree and the berries can be messy. Um, this would be an ornamental tree. It's the only one he recommended for addition. And the coniferous tree that's recommended to be removed is actually already covered under this spruce and leafy thing. So we're not getting rid of any trees with this recommended list. Um, just adding. So if there's any discussion on any of the trees in particular or if you're in favor of going with all of them, we can wrap up that. What's wrong with the black hill spruce now? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. It's just, it was on there twice, basically. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, it was listed all as Black Hill Spruce and then Spruce Species is just below it. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I think it looks good. Um, thanks for looking into that. <laughs> yeah. No problem. I thought it was kind of an interesting thing. And so if any trees are not on this list and they're not able to be planted, is that correct? Oh, they can be planted. Okay. Um, we have a prohibited list. Those okay. are the only trees that cannot be planted. Other trees can be if they're not on this they list. They can be. They just don't count towards the two required trees. So. Got it. So that's the reason why. Okay. I'm good with the list of changes. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. C, draft zoning ordinance amendment cannabis regulation. <coughs> Set up here quick. Okay, so the context of this, um, I think I had just in my mind, um, I'll go through this PowerPoint presentation and then I'll have some recommendations needed from you guys at the end. And then if you just want to ask me anything cannabis related questions that you might have, that could be good too at the end. Um, all right, so in May of 2023, um, cannabis was legalized in Minnesota. Is it not? Mm. Lame. Lame. That's on me. All right, cool. 
right, so in 2023, um, cannabis was legalized in Minnesota. Um, the law went into effect on August 1st of that year, and then upcoming in 2025, the licenses will begin to be dispersed from the Office of Cannabis Management. Uh, so this new law allows for 13 different types of businesses, um, business licensing related to cannabis, um, each fulfilling a unique role in the cannabis and hemp supply chain. Um, so hemp plants and marijuana plants are both the same species. Um, legally, hemp is defined as a cannabis plant that contains 0.3% or less THC, while marijuana is over 0.3% uh, THC. And um, <clears throat> I just want to put a little note here on the first slide saying that you'll see information regarding uh, outdoor cultivation, but uh, we're trying to avoid having that any, in, anywhere in the city, but I'm waiting on Andrea to let me know if that's going to be okay or not. So now I'm just going to go through the definitions of all the different businesses so you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, a micro business, uh, it can cultivate cannabis and manufacture the products um, and package them for sale to customers or another licensed cannabis business. Um, they can only operate one single retail location and it includes also indoor uh, cultivation of plants up to 5,000 square feet. Um, a meso business um, may operate up to three retail locations and it includes cultivation of up to 15,000 square feet. Um, the only caveat is that the retail locations can't be on the same site as the grow operation. A cultivator is just what it sounds like. Um, it's, yeah, it cultivates cannabis, and packages it uh, for sale to another licensed retailer uh, most of the time, and it includes indoor cultivation of up to 30,000 square feet. A manufacturer, the middleman, may manufacture the cannabis products um, and package the products for sale to a licensed retailer. And the retailer itself, otherwise known as a dispensary, um, sells the immature cannabis plants, seedlings, cannabis products, hemp products, and any other products that are authorized by the OCM. Um, a wholesaler may produce and or sell immature cannabis plants and seedlings, cannabis, or their products, um, from another licensed cannabis business. Wholesalers may also import hemp-derived consumer products and lower-potency hemp edibles. A transporter um, transports the immature cannabis plants and the seedlings um, to other licensed cannabis businesses. A testing facility, um, this, they may obtain and test the immature plants, seedlings, products, and hemp products from licensed cannabis businesses. Um, an event organizer, they have the ability to organize temporary cannabis events that last no more than four days. Uh, delivery service, purchase it, and then with the retail endorsement, um, they're allowed to transport and deliver to customers. Medical ca uh, cannabis combination business, um, they can cultivate, they can manufacture, <coughs> and then they can package and um, sell the goods. And they can have up to one location, one retail location in each congressional district. And lower potency hemp edible manufacturer. Um, they manufacture and package just lower potency hemp edibles for consumer sale and sell hemp concentrate and lower potency hemp edibles to other cannabis businesses. And same thing here, except they're the retailer. Okay, so here's where I need your guys' direction. Um, so this is kind of the main one I wanted from you at least, and then um, just a general one after this. So. Does the Planning Commission want to establish a buffer zone prohibiting the operations of any cannabis business within a certain distance of schools, daycares, residential treatment facilities, parks, or other cannabis retail businesses? Um, I thought we'd just go through these one through three. And the zero to 1,000, the 1,000 is the maximum that we are allowed to regulate based on the statute. So I figure we'll just start with the first one. Do we want to have any um, stipulations on a buffer zone for schools? Obviously, right now we have the one school, but you know, this ordinance will be here for as time goes on. So, kind of have to think about that in that frame too. Um, I would say a thousand feet, but yeah, I would agree. Do we have any other like regulations for liquor stores? No. Okay. Then I guess why not? They're both legal. So I agree with Casey on that one. If there aren't any restrictions, if we didn't do that for alcohol, why would we do that should. for cannabis? I agree 100%. Yeah. And I'm thinking... Yeah. We don't do it for alcohol. We don't. No. 
But then again, too, if we're not going to allow growing at home, do we allow people to brew their own beer at home? Uh, we do allow growing at home, actually. It's part of the statute. They can have up okay. to, I think it's six plants. Okay. So this the growing is basically being on site in the location. Right. For the in this context. Old, right? Yes. Or nearby. Oh, okay. Right. Gotcha. So you can an individual can grow at home up to six plants, but this is just business. For the yeah. business. Businesses. Yeah. For your for personal use. Yeah. Yeah. So really we don't have any uh, between um, liquor stores or schools or daycares, we don't have any. I didn't mm-hmm. not realize that. I just think that would be rude. No. Yeah, I, I mean, I they're, agree. That makes kids sense. are going to find. We, we rec- I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Regulating it if we're not regulating. We had it. something yeah. regulating um, explicit uh, business yes. at one time. And yes, we have that, right? Yeah, the <coughs> only um, item that we have, like buffer distances. From certain from other uses is sexually oriented <coughs> businesses. Yeah. yeah. Well, my concern at doing this now is, would we also be limiting um, those that uh, medicinal cannabis like dispensaries, like that don't do recreational but just do medicinal? Would we be zoning them out if we were to do something like this? It's my interpretation that they all fall under the same umbrella. Oh. So yes. Do you see much fire schools? I mean, I don't know about commercial or industrial crow facility by our school even, because we have it zoned for mostly residential around. Right. So mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. why I say I don't right. think it's a real problem. We could even say liquor stores too if you wanted to, or go into the liquor. But that would be thing. yeah. That's like a different yeah. subject. But yeah. I'm just saying that. If you want to be equal with mm-hmm. it, then yeah. I'm not sure. I just don't see anything that's going to be built right. by our school that Correct. would be industrial or that would work or within the kind of well, the closest um, potential retail area where it could be retailed is we have some area along County Road Two and County Road Twenty Seven, kind of you know d- down from the firehouse, uh, but closer to the County Road Twenty Seven intersection, so it could be quarter mile quarter mile or so, maybe not quite. The New Market Downtown District, I mean, how does that limit them from like the church, the parks? Um, I guess mm-hmm. I don't even know how many parks are this way. Right. <coughs> I, I, mean, I just don't think you should limit it. I mean, I'm not a user, but I just think if it's, it's gotta be fair either way. I, I, I agree with you. <laughs> it shouldn't be one or the other, it should be. Well, how about for example or context? Say in the strip mall uh, right over here with this the Anytime Fitness or mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. that is. Now, what if there's a dispensary or somebody wants to explore that as an option? Mm-hmm. So, would that be an option, or would I, I don't how or That's are the, the houses? It, yes, yeah. I mm-hmm. I don't know how close the homes are right there to that. And they're pretty close. Yeah. But then again, but it's not home. No, it was daycare. To daycare. Yeah, but somebody school. could have a residential daycare. I know that oh. when we were interviewing daycares, there were three back there, by the way. So I, I don't want to right. ruin anybody's business. But is there enough distance, say, between that mall and the nearest homes to be able to? Well, we've got a whole new strip mall that's. Right. There already, there could be a daycare and a dispensary there. in that whole strip mall. Correct. So I don't think you should limit it. Okay. I just don't know how well the daycare would do. <laughs> well, it, it, it really, I mean, realistically, I'm just trying to think like in a bigger picture, right? So if someone were to open this type of business and there is a daycare, I don't know that they would necessarily look at that location. <coughs> they might be a little bit choosy. Maybe the daycare would be a little bit choosy. I don't, I don't know, I, I guess. I think and that's up to the business operator. And I, I agree with you. I think another way to look at it too is that, you know, if we're comparing it to liquor, like it would be easier for somebody in a daycare to get into a liquor store than it would be to get into a cannabis store. Correct. The amount of security there is unbelievable. Yeah. So just thought I'd put that there. I don't think we should limit it. I don't. I don't think so either. I think if we do, it's kind of picking on one and not the other. Just 
to add to whoever's point about the distance between the strip malls, it's a thousand feet and includes a lot of houses for both strip malls. So. Doesn't feel that right. No, <laughs> yeah. no, I don't. I don't think it should be limited. I don't know how others feel. Okay. Well, I heard a three to two. I heard three to two. So I guess I don't know where well, you two I sit on I that. I feel there should be some distance, but I don't know. Yes, I would agree, maybe some distance, but again, with the liquor stores, it's hard to pick on one and not the other. I see where you're coming from on that. Yeah. A sixth grader came into a cannabis store, I'm sure the worker... I would doubt that would be the case. <laughs> right, I'm just... <laughs> I think they're easier to get into the liquor store, like he said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have they security have at the door. In the liquor store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's For retail too. operations, do they have to have um, Retail operations have to have a, a doorman. security guard who mm -hmm. checks IDs. Mm-hmm. But there, there are three different items. There's schools, there's parks, mm -hmm. residential, daycare. I mean, mm -hmm. you could put numbers on each one or no numbers on any of them. I'm putting no numbers on either one of them. Right. Same. Same. Okay. I'm, a, I'm against that idea. For sure. That's totally fine. That's yeah. what this is mm -hmm. for. So. <laughs> All right, um, I hear a 3-2, and I will bring that recommendation to the council that we are interested in no buffer zones. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> I do think it's important that um, the council know that it wasn't unanimous. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'll give them all the context for sure. Yeah. Okay, and then the final kind of, I don't know how to ask this, I guess, or if... Just an open-ended, what's your opinion? Um, do we see anything that seems like it doesn't make sense here? Um, or if you want my logic behind why I might have done something? And then overall, get to the point of recommending that this or some different variation of this would be recommended to the city council. This is just showing where everything's permitted. P means permitted. Um, no. Yep. P means, yep. Special permission and conditional use permit that would require city council approval. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, we're basically guiding, um, except for just the retail part of it, um, the manufacturing warehouse distribution of the plants uh, to the industrial type zoning districts. Yep. Um, the I-1 and the I-2 districts are on basically the east side of the interstate, uh, but that B-6 uh, campus, we, uh, that would be a zoning district that would be eligible on the west side of the interstate on the Edelman property. And if you want to bring us, uh, we could bring up the comprehensive plan map to show you um, where that would be allowed. But um, Isn't that also on the corner up here too? Um, Roundabout? Right, no, nope, that is, uh, that would be uh, B5. Okay. So um, you can see that there's the retail operations would, were basically suggesting that they be permitted in any retail zoning district. It's kind of like a tobacco shop or mm -hmm. uh, we, it's just retail. Mm -hmm. So what about the B5 then? Uh, B5 is um, your general commercial district that you'll see along County Road 2 going out towards the interstate. You might see that same district out near the um, corner of County Road 2 and 27 on the far west side of the community as we grow that way. So that, um, that corridor along County Road 2 is where we would see B5. B4 is going to be uh, right out at the interchange. Highway, it's called the Highway Commercial. Are you trying to share that? Um, could you, the comp plan map would be better. Okay. Oh. <coughs> um, can you actually go into the comp plan? Um, I think there's a couple different, yeah, there. Um, oh, I'm sorry, can you go back? <laughs> Um, yeah, go down to the land use chapter, and that one that was updated 10-1, oh, go back up, chapter 6, right, yeah, uh, oh, 
up to two up. Okay, so um, can can you point out on does your does your mouse work? Yeah, I think I can see his mouse. Okay. Yep. Okay, so uh, can you point out the um, business limited industrial on the Edelman property? That light pink, um, not that one, that next one. Up, oh, yeah, that light, all that light pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, and then south of two, that light pink. Okay. Okay. Um, so the manufacturing warehouse distribution would could be permitted on a smaller scale in those areas okay on a bigger scale on the east side of the interchange okay and then pretty much anywhere you see pink or blue along the county road 2 corridor retail would be allowed mm -hmm. and would you concur yeah definitely. Definitely. Any limitations on like smoke stops like tobacco shops or anything like that right oh, it has excuse me on yeah we don't have any like no. when you mentioned um like a tobacco shop it just clicked in my head like we don't have any regulations on that like for distance or no anything like that. No. no when I was going through the ordinance and creating these I compared it exactly like it was any right. like it wasn't cannabis was right. what I was thinking my friend right. so yeah okay yeah and we really had that same thing in mind where especially when we're talking about the retail right. where um, liquor or tobacco shops would be allowed that this could kind of be similar at the retail part of it. Yeah. The grow, the manufacturing sure. warehouse distribution is different. There are smells associated with right. the growing, so um, we more industrial. Yeah. 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 Right. So the smells associated with it is a big, a big deal, and that's kind of why we chose to go the conditional use permit route for all of it, so we can mm -hmm. make sure that we add adequate, you know, stipulations to air scrubbers or filtration. And that makes sense. And especially with the lingering question of can we prohibit outdoor grow completely, then it's just a safer route for us to take. And that's what your that caveat is. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So we've talked about it internally, and we think if there are outdoor grow operations, maybe they belong out in the country, like right. sure. in yeah. Market I, yeah. Township. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or in a, in a rural area, not in an in a urban city. Mm -hmm. We're not suggesting that be permitted. I agree with that. I agree as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. I think what you had in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes touchy, sense. I, it makes sense. Okay. Like I asked the question, can we have a brewery like in downtown? It's whatever matched up. You can answer it better than I can, Renee. But. Um. Yeah, your typical. <laughs> your typical brewery like. Me too. No, yeah. they don't do pro. Who? No, it's B2. B2, so downtown. It can go anywhere, B2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there are a number, oh, kind of like cannabis there. stores, there are a number of different types depending on how much you make, the volume that you're manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So s not all of them would be allowed downtown, but, um, and I can pull up the zoning ordinance to kind of say. Kind like a micro or something? Yeah. Right. yeah like Angry yeah. Inch yeah. or like Go yep. Brewing, stuff yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, like that would be allowed in our downtown. The township discussed this at all? The county's working on their ordinance. Okay. Yeah, and the county and us are still in conversations about who's going to take over, like the license registration aspect of it. So that's kind of the big question we're waiting to get answered right now. What do other? How does it work in other towns and counties? We're, sure. we're pretty ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't have many comparables at okay. all. So. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, for liquor and tobacco, the city licenses uh, liquor businesses. It's a separate business license that's issued by the city council. You have to meet certain criteria, background checks, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, for tobacco, the county is doing our licensing for us okay. currently. Um, I think we would support the county Absolutely. doing the licensing for the um, cannabis as well, but mm -hmm. uh, we don't know that yet. We have a meeting with them next month to discuss it so okay and you're still exploring uh, municipal cannabis 
dispensary. No, no, nope. city anymore. council um, shut that down. So we're no longer going in that direction. Well, for now, they said at least the revenue would have been kind of nice. It would have, but I, I don't want to speak for the council, but I think the general consensus was that the risk was too large and the upfront cost was a lot. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Brandon uh, worked with a consultant to um, help mm -hmm. guide the city through that process. It was very expensive. Yeah. Phase one was $30,000 and that's before even getting into location type like thing. So it was going to be a really expensive venture and I guess that they didn't want to put their eggs all into that basket. So. And there might be competition, you know, there might be a lot of, um, mm -hmm. you know, the new thing, there might be a lot of people looking to start businesses and some members of the council just adamantly didn't feel that government should be competing with private business. Definitely. So I think it was kind of a combination of those two reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Northfield is going for a municipal dispensary. Are they? Yeah. I saw them in the work group earlier this or last week. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. A great s right, tax Lakeville revenue. Wouldn't because mm -hmm. they they're well because they got all their liquor, liquor stores, stores are. are. Mm -hmm. It's a lot less enticing for cities over twelve thousand five hundred population, because you know you can maximize the, the amount of licenses for twelve thousand and under. So we could say oh. everybody else can only get one, but we also get one. So with Lakeville, I think big, bigger cities would have way more competition and the market would become quickly saturated, is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. So come to Northfield. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so unless there's any other questions or anything, I'll recommend to the council that, or I'll pass along your recommendation to the council that the zoning placed before you today was acceptable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you, thanks. Yeah, thank you guys. All right, uh, miscellaneous community community development updates. Um, I really don't have any updates. A uh, couple of projects that we're working on that might be at the next meeting, at the next planning commission meeting, is if you recall, Parkway Meadows, the development north of City Hall, off the east end of James Parkway. Um, the city council approved the preliminary plat on that development with the conditions that the planning commission recommended, which was the addition of three, three. elimination of three of the lots and adding that, that to the park dedication and a temporary cul-de-sac at the south end of Riley Road. Um, the developers continued to analyze the development based on those recommendations and he's trying to, apparently it's really tight with costs, so he has indicated He's going to be applying for an amendment to the pr preliminary plat to kind of adjust the layout on the south half of the site. So that might be before you next month. Um, and then we are working with a developer who has submitted a concept plan for Dakota Acres second edition. Um, we might be bringing that back. It's with our next month. It's to be determined. There are more townhouses? <coughs> so, yeah, right now, I think there was uh, 18 townhomes and then an apartment building, a 36 unit apartment building as well, all on the same site. So I don't think it's coming next month. Next month. I don't think we'll be ready. Yeah. No. It, it's very preliminary. It's like a one page concept plan at this yeah. point. Yeah. So. yeah. I would agree. Dakota, where is that? Um, north of the. On the way to the school. It's on James Park. On the way to the oh, school. Okay. All right. yeah. Those That's townhouses up. Where that exit way. just got closed. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Or, yeah, the entrance yeah. exit. Yeah. So then outside that of nice. that, I think. Yeah, it, now it does. So we'll for sure have the public hearing on the detached accessory structure ordinance, uh, the public hearing on the cannabis um, ordinance, um, and the public hearing on the landscaping requirements, for sure. Okay. What's happening with Barsness? Yeah, I was just, that's exactly what I was just going to ask. It was purchased. Um, so it's no longer Barsness's property. Okay. Nick Giesen, who owns Endzone, yep. and then um, a, the, what's his last name? Brian Casino. Casino from New Prague. Um, they don't really have any plans at this point, but they're just kind of in there looking at the property and taking down some trees. Who's doing the maintenance of the silt fence there on the road right now? That should be Nick. Yeah, we did talk to them a little bit about that, but... Um, Who's the enforcer, I guess? Uh, well, what's the enforcement behind it? I guess there is none. Or? Um, you can 
sent him a letter. I don't know. It's I think it'd be uh, initially a phone call. We, we met with them uh, one time. It was just kind of an introductory meeting and mm -hmm. went over what the guidance was under the comprehensive plan, what it could be used for today under the current guidance. Um, and they just kind of took the information and seemed, you know, really wanting to work with the city, but I don't know that they themselves have plans to develop it. I think they may be trying to find a developer for the site. Um, but as far as any erosion, if there are issues, you know, sometimes there have been uh, at the driveway uh, when in heavy rains, some kind of washing out onto the county road. So we've kind of been jointly working between public works and yeah. the county. Well, I guess it would be, it was the barstnesses at one time that I don't know if they were enforced upon or, you know. Mm -hmm. We were doing enforcement action on them at, yeah. before they passed. It's got to be maintained, so. Yeah, well, I, I think it'll look better now with the, the current owner, but I think they'll be easier to work with. Yeah. Do they buy the equipment with it? Or? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Leftover pieces of equipment come with the property. <laughs> and I brought that up at our meeting with yeah. them, and it sounded like the Barsness family is going to get those out of there at some point. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, I don't have a lot of updates, so. I don't have any. Does anybody else? Okay. Anyone want to? Do you have any uh, township updates? I have not heard from them, and it's on. Yeah, it's definitely on my to-do list too. It's actually on my list for keeps every day. It keeps getting pushed, but um, to contact your township attorney, um, I talked to Doug DQ about uh, well specifically Harvest Drive and um, annexing. Uh, it becomes problematic when we annex uh, right away that is in the township because, you know, most of your residents own to the center of the road mm -hmm. and then it creates a split of their parcel and there's some, pro it, there's problems with that or challenges with that of splitting somebody's parcel into two legal descriptions and um, DQ just suggested that I talk with your attorney about it. Um, and then it's tentative that Tom Terry would maybe come to your next uh, meeting in, on Tuesday, if there's room for him yet, yeah. next Tuesday. Um, so that's kind of needs to be worked out this week, but that's one thing on my to-do list here. Pickleball courts, are you trying to keep those a secret? <laughs> At the town hall? Nice. That's awesome. That's great. Awesome. Good for you. Yeah. Um, we were notified this afternoon that uh, Niagara has hired a plant manager um, for the plant, and they have some of their other jobs posted on um, Deed's website time see they're putting lines in over there or water lines or something for the street mm -hmm. how big is that building again i can't recall we saw it on paper but 425 I yeah mm -hmm. four what four twenty five thousand square feet yeah. how big was amazon uh, about eight hundred and fifty thousand square feet this looks like a lot of football fields. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to do any 
if mm. you were in there, I'm sure it would be huge. So, it's like 10 acres under one roof. So. Yeah. Went up so fast. I'm surprised they could grade and then put walls <coughs> up there. Yeah. I saw Target when they built Target, it fell down. Mm -hmm. Really? When mm -hmm. they built the Target up here, it really? up one wall caved. Oh, wow. Because they were building it. I didn't know that. Hmm. Didn't grade around for that? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Moved and. Yeah. It, I don't know exactly what happened, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Good. Anyone want to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make a motion to yeah. adjourn. Anyone want a second? So moved. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Meeting adjourned at 7.48 p.m. Thanks. Recording everyone. stopped.